I am uh, deeply honored and excited to be here. Uh, so few lines about uh, myself first. Uh, I'm Aditya. I grew up in a small town in Aligarh, yeah, that is Uttar Pradesh. And uh, from there on, I went to IIT Delhi, started engineering there, and then I immediately jumped into entrepreneurship after that. So my topic for today is how to continuously reinvent yourself, how to keep on reinventing yourself. So it was uh, May of 2007 when I quit my first job. I had no idea what I, I'm going to do after that. I just plunged into entrepreneurship. While it was a risky move, and I would not advise any of you to do that, but I did that with no idea what to do next, and I was just two years out of college. Entrepreneurship, my friends, is not an easy journey. It's fulfilling, but it's full of challenges. In next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through my journey of building four educational startups and five principles that I feel are necessary to re keep on reinventing yourself. First one is to acquire a specific skill. From 2007 to 2014, I was building an edtech startup where we were teaching students in the US with Indian tutors. It was an online medium, which was not popular then. We were kind of pioneers at that point of time in 2007. But by 2014, it had become obsolete. There were a lot of players who were doing that. But in this seven years journey, I acquired a lot of specific skills. Now, I acquired specific skills regarding how to build up a company, how to hire teams, how to do sales, online marketing, and everything around how to transform a company. So when the downturn happened, we quickly pivoted from old model to new model, and we could regain back all the confidence. Friends, life will throw challenges at you. You need to keep on refining yourself. Our employees, in our case, our employees were young like us. So they copied us big time. One of the guys, he attached his bank to our website, so money was flowing into his bank and not our bank. And when, I came to, and when we came to know about that, it was too late. Instead of us calling the police, he called the police and police questioned us. It was really funny at that point of time. Some people were even more smarter. They took months of salary from us in advance, saying that their parents were ill. And later on, we came to know that they were developing the same model like ours. So a lot of these interesting things happened with us. One guy stole my wallet, and he was found breaking an ATM. After two days, he wanted to buy a necklace for his girlfriend. Guys, these things will keep on happening while you're building a company, but you have to keep on reinventing yourself. And that's what we did all the time. This, this idea of continuously re reinventing ourselves made us their champions. And we became their role models in the long course. I remember a story of famous basketball player, Michael Jordan. Once his father came to him and showed him a t-shirt, asked him, Mike, what would be the price of this t-shirt? Mike said, it would be around $2. Father said, right. He said, Mike, can you sell it for $10? Mike said, let me try that. He thought how to do it. He washed the t-shirt, ironed it, and then sold it in the market for $10. He was really excited. He said, Father, I've sold it for $10. Father said, that's very good. After a few days, Father brought a similar t-shirt and asked Mike, can you sell it for $20 now? Mike said, let me try that. Mike thought how to do it. He went to his friend who had a collection of Mickey Mouse stickers. They both pasted a Mickey Mouse sticker on the t-shirt. They went to a school which had a lot of rich kids and a rich kid bought it for $20. Mike was very excited. After a few days, few days later, his father came back again to him and said, Mike, can you sell the similar t-shirt now for $100? That's a big money. Mike said, let me try. He thought about it. He came to know there was a famous actress in the city. He stood in the queue for hours and got autograph of that famous actress on the t-shirt. And later on, that t-shirt was, was auctioned for $1,250. So see, my friends, Mike had this specific skill of finding out, out how something can be done and not why it can't be done. The next phase of my life was about developing a playbook. From 2014 to 2018, I built multiple websites, 
like us Kaitians, trans tutors, e-medical prep, study abroad, and many of, of them. And we had a specific idea of building a website, and we knew how to grow traffic on the websites. By ranking higher and higher on the Google, by producing content related to what people were searching for, we could rank our websites on the top. And we got a lot of traffic from, for free from Google. We even built, when I call playbook, by playbook I mean we built a formula which converted that content into visitors and then visitors into revenue. That was the formula that we had coined. And we were riding a high tide at, point, at that point of time. But as the time passed, this formula became obsolete, like everything with everything in life. This formula became obsolete, the ROI started going down, and there were many companies who were coming in the market who, had, who were funded with billions of dollars. So they were making our idea become less and less popular. So it was time to reinvent. So we focused on what next. And at that point of time, we came to know that Chinese companies were doing very well in EdTech. They had built large top of the funnels. By top of the funnel, I mean they had built large systems through which you can have millions of students using your products, and then you can sell them once they are habitual of your product. So we went to China, stayed there for a couple of months, understood how what we were doing with websites, they were doing with mobile apps. We got, got that knowledge from China, and then we started thinking that how we can do that in Indian market. And that's my next phase, which is about customer obsession. From 2019 to 2020, I was building a company called InstaSolve. InstaSolve was a photo solution app. So by that I mean is you could take photo of any question in physics, chemistry, and math, and the moment you take a photo, it shows you a solution step by step. So it becomes very easy for students who don't have a tutor or who are struggling in physics, chemistry, and math to understand a problem. Now, the, the students are searching always on Google and looking for answers to their problems. And the sheer number of these searches is about 1 billion searches per day. So because the search volume was so high that our product instantly clicked, we started getting a lot of traffic. And within no time, we, start, we got 1 million monthly active users. Now, we relied heavily on data and what customers were telling us. So we, we checked data, and based on data, we took decisions. Very strikingly, customers clicked on connecting with a tutor button in the app. And we realized that students are happy about the solutions that we are providing, but they want to connect with tutor. Taking this, that as a cue, we, we connected our app with WhatsApp, and now students could, no long, could not only see the solutions, they could also text chat, audio chat, and video chat with the tutors. And this improved the retention big time. So our retention and engagement numbers became very, very high. And we were recognized by Google as one of the stickiest edtech app in the world. One of them. Now, this gave us so, confident, so much of confidence, and our numbers in terms of users skyrocketed. We got a lot of funding and acquisition offers, and we got acquired in 2020. And all of this happened in just one year. Now, connecting real teachers with students also gave us another idea that how can we do this without a real teacher? Can we build a system like that by having a technology which teaches students step by step without a real teacher in place? That's my next phase, which is surrounding yourself with champions. So customers always tell you what has to be done if you read them carefully. The next phase of my life, which started in 2020, was about building another edtech product, which is which we are also doing it today. It's called ByteLearn. ByteLearn is an AI-powered tutor which helps students study math in a step-by-step -step manner. So unlike any product where you see a question and it shows you the solution, ByteLearn breaks down that problem into steps and it teaches the student those steps. In turn, it saves a lot of time for the teachers. So imagine a math teacher saving hours of time because ByteLearn is doing that for the teacher. So it became very, very interesting for the teachers. The best part that has happened with us is that we have stayed in the same domain for long. 
and we have continuously reinvented. So it has made us kind of experts with a lot of first-hand insights about how students, parents, teachers, and stakeholders think about education. We have, we have surrounded ourselves with champions, people who have done it before. So currently, in my current company, we have many advisors who have sold their companies to larger companies, and we have given all of them stake in the company. Now, all these advisors who have got stake in the company, they come with specific skill set, which is helping us leapfrog, go much faster than we can do on our own, because you can't do everything on your own. Bringing good quality people, having high talent density, always propels the company to grow faster. Never, think, never be shy of sharing your equity, which is your shareholding, in the company with people who can help you leapfrog. Learn from Gen Z, which my friend Abhinav also talked, uh, talked about. Learn from Gen Z because they are the torch bearers of the future. And once you have done it, and you have seen it for many years, it's time to give back by investing in the young generation. Support the young by guiding them or investing in them. The last part of my talk is about mindset of a winner. Ability to reinvent oneself depends a lot on power of subconscious mind. If you do something for 10,000 hours, it gets ingrained in your mind so much that you can do that thing even while sleeping. A mindset of winner is always how something can be done and not why something cannot be done. He will find just one reason to do it, while a failure will find hundreds of reasons of not doing it. A winner doesn't accept failure. He has a dream and he will keep on trying it. Reinvention does not always mean that you are thinking about growth all the time. It can be a way to readjust and reinvent yourself while you are in a downturn, like we all saw in, in COVID. I remember a famous story by a man called Karoli Takas. He was a shooter in Hungary. He was one of the best shooters in the country. In 1938, it goes long back. In 1938, he was considered as to be, to be the best shooter in the country, and he was supposed to participate in Olympics in 1940. In 1938, he was part of an army training camp, and while he was training, a hand grenade burst in his right hand, which was the best shooting hand of the country. And he lost, he badly injured his right hand. Now, he had two choices, either to feel depressed about it or to start something new. He thought, let me start something new. He started training his left hand. Immediately after that, one year after that, he, he, he entered into a big championship in 1939. And the whole crowd got up and cheered for him, saying that this is the man. We like him because he has come to celebrate us. He said, no, I have not come to celebrate you. I have come to fight against you. I am going to participate in the championship. He participated in that, in that championship with his left hand, and he won that. Now, he started focusing on 1940 40 Olympics. That got canceled because of war. He focused on 1944 Olympics. That also got, got canceled because of war. Then finally, in 1948, he participated in Olympics, and he won gold medal. Again in 1952, he won gold medal again in that. So my friends, he won gold medal twice. He had to wait for that gold medal 10 years. So while he started, he was 28. When he started, he won his first gold medal, he was 38. And imagine in these competitive sports, at 38, your body slows down. So my friends, people will find hundreds of reasons of not doing something but the winners will find just one reason to do something and they will do it. Thank you.